Assalamu alaikum. We're going to start in two minutes. We're going to start with Nasheed and the kids' the presentations. And uh, as we did a few weeks ago, the sisters are invited to come to the main hall, as did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam did. The women and the men will always wear in the same hall. So the sisters are very welcome to come to the main hall if they want. If they don't, we will honor and respect that, inshallah. Well, do you want us to go up front? So they yes, can come to the front, yes, inshallah. So they can come. Yes, inshallah. So That's come to this side, inshallah. So the brothers are moving to the front, left side. And the sisters are very welcome to come and sit in the back, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. And let's invite uh, the kids to come back, inshallah. Somebody's keys, yeah. He'll find it. He's not going too far. So, sisters, please come in, inshallah, for the event to start. This is, uh, I don't think, uh, this is from the Prophet. Inshallah, everyone come here, the sisters and the brothers. <laughs> come sit in the back now. And where are the children's representations? Where are Dr. Where is Dr. Rehan? So, we should have a piece of what does he mean by the piece of presentation? The food smells good, it looks good. We're gonna have a good night, inshallah. Yeah. It's going to be a very interesting program. 
Uh, we will start with the recitation of Quran and then we will have kids present. We will have kids presentation. After that, we have an expert on Nasheed. We will have Nasheed. And after that, we'll see how far that takes us. It's about 7.34. And we'll announce the rest of the program after that, inshallah. We have lecture. We will have Risha, inshallah. And of course, we have delicious meals awaiting for us. And we still have many families who are on their way, as usual. Uh, our times are special. So, um, yeah, uh, if sisters want to come in, uh, they can come join us on this side. And if they want to stay on that side, that's okay. But it is okay to come on this side to give encouragement to the children, inshallah. So, we will start with the recitation of Quran. There, here we do the Qayyam al um, twice a week. And we have been doing from the Ramadan. What happens in Masajid, they close the Quran and wait till the next Ramadan to open it and then the whole Masjid is full and everybody is very uh, religiously attached to the Quran. We have not left the Quran. We continue that momentum and twice a week brothers are standing here listening to the Quran. This is Allah's promise to us that He has descended this zikr and He is going to protect it. So we as human beings are standing here doing that work and may Allah give us the strength to carry that work on. So pretty soon inshallah we will be finishing the Quran, another Quran and inshallah starting again after that right after we finish. And that kind of work I have not seen personally. I was a trustee at Islamic Center of Maryland. Uh, have been involved in ISB as well. I haven't seen that. So it doesn't have, your, your masjid does not have to be a very big grand masjid with a big building. It is what Allah sees is the action. Even a small deed done on a regular basis is more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that takes, when we did not have this masjid, the Islam was here, but it has brought a lot closer the communities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Quran. A lot more children know a lot more Quran than they did before this masjid came into existence. So this in itself, if this masjid does not do anything, that in itself is a major achievement. Bringing people closer to Quran. And as you will listen to a very small child reciting Tabarak uh, al This was not the case. We attended a, a big gathering and uh, teenagers were reciting Qalwalla and Walazi and they were being celebrated. That was the case in the beginning. That's not the case anymore. So may Allah bless this masjid, may Allah bless this gathering, may Allah bless the community and make us strong Muslims and make our next generation a stronger Muslim. So Islam is here to stay. This is where there was no masjid. This county never had a masjid. This is where it all started. And Alhamdulillah it's going strong. Today we are assembled here to remember our Prophet birthday. This is the month when the greatest man on the surface of earth was born and we do this every year and we will listen to an excellent lecture inshallah on the life of Prophet Muhammad and some of the kids will be presenting about the Prophet inshallah. With that I'm going to ask Alpha to come and start the Quran and we'll start the program inshallah. So, he is going to read 
Tabarak al Ladi, Surah Mulk, and we will not have him in say the entire, so the first 10 ayahs, inshallah. Yeah, where is Muhammad? He's coming. Okay. He's saying it's not long. I said brief is better. <laughs> it's about like the the cave, like when Sayyidina Muhammad he went into the cave and the, the first revelation was descended upon him from uh, Sayyidina Jibreel, the angel. <laughs> This is a story of Ikra. It's about uh, a prophet, peace be upon him, like the first revelation uh, that descended upon him through Angel Jibreel. So, Angel Jibreel, he descended. So, Sayyidina Muhammad, whenever he wanted, whenever he wanted to like clear his mind or you know be alone, he he would go to a, a cave named Hira. It was in a, a mountain, and he would just sit there alone, like at night or. And one one day he was sitting alone in that cave, and uh, uh, Angel Jibreel he descended upon Prophet Muhammad, when he was in the cave alone. He hugged him really tightly, and Sayyidina Muhammad he felt like his every bone in his body would break, and he told the Ikra, which translates to an Arabic read. 
So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, he responded saying, I'm illiterate. You know, he can't, he couldn't read at the time. So Angel Jabeel asked him again, Iqra. And Rush to like Prophet, peace be, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he responded again, you know, I'm illiterate, I can't read. And he asked him three times. After the third time, when uh, Sayyidina Muhammad said, I can't read, I'm illiterate, uh, Angel Jabeel conveyed his revelation upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he said, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, al-ladhi allama bil qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam, kalla inna al-insana la yadha, an ra'a mustaq ikhstaghna, inna ila rabbika al-raj'a. Alright, so these are like the first eight ayat. He didn't, he didn't descend, he didn't like uh, convey all of the, the ayat at once. He, he did them in parts, kind of. And the first eight ayat, they like roughly translate to read with the name of your Lord who created everything. He created man from a clot of blood. Read and your Lord is the most gracious who imparted knowledge by means of the pen. He taught man what he did not know. In fact, man crosses the limits because he deems himself to be free of need. All right, so these are like the, like more like what this, this is based about because the impact of this, the story can be translated into a lot of different meanings and it, like a lot of different lessons can be learned from it. So one, one like this event can be translated into like it exhibits humanity's growth and development in knowledge through reading you know using knowledge and reading and writing and it exhibits humanity's growth through that the surah can also be translated as a representation of allah's gifts upon us such as knowledge and how some humans have transformed that gift into a source of evil or ignorance the, the main message, in my opinion, from the story is the importance of humans seeking knowledge as Allah created us, created us as such beings. Allah created us as beings that strive for knowledge, we struggle to learn, we, we, always, we always change and evolve. He created us beings who like, don't just stay at one state, we always want to evolve and become better. Our main source of knowledge should be the Qur'an that Allah bestowed upon us as it has many lessons of wisdom and answers to questions that we struggle with every day. You know, Islam is not just a religion, it's it's a code and way of life. That's it. MashaAllah. All right, Islam, you want to go next? Come here. Oh, that's those, those bones are buried in the earth, given from their blessings to landscapes and hills. I give my soul a sacrifice of the grace you occupy. Is it, it is Chastity, generosity, and liberality. Your beloved, whose intercession is sought on the narrow path towards heaven, if my foot slips, had it not been for you, nor the sun, nor the moon would have been created, nor the sky, tablet or pen. May the Lord of, of the throne pray upon you as many times as the sun rises and goes astray and save for you. For you. <laughs> Somehow I was able to convince Daniel to say something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he was trying to money for that. <laughs> so, inshallah, today I want to talk about the lessons we can learn from the trials of the Prophet because every aspect of his life is uh, like a role model to us, so we can learn at, some, at least one thing from it. Yeah. And um, the most notable of trials I want to speak about is the uh, trial of Ta'if. Uh, so before Rasulullah he went to Ta'if, Khadija, his beloved wife, and his beloved uncle Abu Talib passed away a few days before. And so he had basically no protection in Mecca, so he was all alone. And so he decided to go to Ta'if to give da'wah over there. 
And so he went, arrived in Ba'if, he went to the leaders of Ba'if, who were three brothers. And they all rejected him and, and they mocked him. So he, he was uh, sad. And he went to the marketplace of Ba'if. And for the next week or so, he did da'wah over there, uh, calling to Allah. And very few people uh, listened to him. And once those few people listened to him, the leaders of Ba'if, they became scared. So they drove out the Rasulullah sallam out of Ba'if and had a mob pelt him with stones, so much so that his sandals were soaked with blood. And, and he, he was very um, And his companion um, tried to protect him, but he was also from head to toe covered in blood from the attacks that he tried to, uh, from the attacks he tried to uh, uh, take before the Rasulullah And even after all of this, all of these tribulations, after his um, beloved relatives dying and him giving uh, da'wah and no one listening, the angel of the mountains came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah Wasallam, I can take the mountains that Ba'if is situated between and I can crush Ba'if to you. And all he said was, no, I make dua that their progeny, their children, will become ones who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any harm. So even after all of this, he did not wish revenge upon those who hurt him. He was merciful and that's why Allah, and that's why he's called Rahmatul Alameen, mercy of the world. And that's why I think that we should, whenever a child afflicts us, we should be uh, patient and uh, have our trust upon Allah rather than think that we are doomed and that nothing can help us. Thank you. He was trying to pass. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Stand up and speak up. This is your time. A couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Speak. <laughs> All right. We'll do the nasheed, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. You can share with me, inshallah. Okay? Billahi dharidi ya hamam. Bimawlidi al-badir al-tamam. Billahi dharidi ya hamam. Bimawlidi al-badir al-tamam. Noor al-rabi ala qad bada. فمحان الكون الظلام فمحان الكون الظلام الكون صاح مكبرا وغنى الهدى مستبشرا الكون صاح مكبرا وغنى الهدى مستبشرا والكفر ولا مدبرا لما أتى هادي الأنام بالله غردي يا حمام بمولد البدر التمام نور الربيع لقد بدا فمحى عن الكون الظلام فمحى عن الكون الظلام ميلاد طه نعمة وظهور أحمد منة ميلاد طه نعمة وظهور أحمد منة هو رحمة وهداية من عند مولانا السلام بالله غرد يا حمام بمولد البدر التمام نور الربيع لقد بدا نور الربيع لقد
قد بدا فمحى عن الكون الظلام فمحى عن الكون الظلام السلام عليك عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك عليك يا من هو الرحمن والرحيم المدد المدد يا رسول الله الكفاية الكفاية يا رسول الله يا ولي الله يا نبي الله يا شفي الله يا من هو الرحمن والرحيم فلما سلم من نبي وشان مولد النبي شار السلول للأمة إلى ما أنكر النبي عن به مجمع محمد ياس النبي نجل العامي موفى آمين عبد الإله إلى جانين وقال أطا بنت فاتي بإذن راب إلى جانين يوم الإثنين إثنى أشاف إلى محمد النبي لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا أزبي ببني الرغوف أزبي به وطفاني أزبي به وبتاه أزبي بشيء تجاري سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا محمد رسول الله عليه وسلم I will say inshallah the shame to Sallu ala Rasul wa Sayyidil Anwar. Thank you, brother. What's your name?
وهو الفتى اليتيم فدان في الحياة لتوبه النظير له الشباب يعرف والعهد جاهليا لكنه تعفف بالفطرة النقية صلوا على الرسول وسيد الأنام صلوا على الرسول وسيد الأنام ودعوة القبول بالخير والسلام الحلم من صفاته وطبعه الأنام الحلم من صفاته وطبعه الأنا فلم يغضب لذاته بل غبة لله دعا إلى الإنصاف وحبب الفضيلة وأوضح الأهداف وبين الوسيلة صلوا على الرسول وسيد الأنام صلوا على الرسول وسيد الأنام ودعوة القبول بالخير والسلام صلوا على الرسول وسيد الأنام ودعوة القبول بالخير والسلام صلى الله عليه وسلم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله So you guys want to pray or you want the lecture first? Pray. How long is the lecture? Not very long. How long is the lecture? Let's do the lecture and then we'll, we can pray. How long is the lecture? We can delay the lecture. Two hours and now we'll pray first. You're like two hours. <laughs> You're taking him on face value. He's the speaker, right? The talent guy? So, no, that's the, the tactic. I mean, to scare you two hours, then you will settle down for one hour. <laughs> and you'll be so happy. You see, I got, got one hour. No, it's a small lecture, maybe 20 minutes. Is that good? It's crazy, 8.30 anyway, right? So, inshallah, we will have a lecture and we are lucky to have um, a distinguished speaker among us. He is a national level speaker. So, may Allah bless him and give him help. Uh, he is around us for a long time to come. Jazakallah khair. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وإمام الخلق أجمعين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم my brothers and my sisters I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as there is no one to praise but Him. And I make salah on His Khatam al Anbiya wal Mursaleen, the seal of all the prophets and all the messengers. Dr. Rehan did um, a very tactical, skillful move. He must put me before salah and before food. You know what that means. <laughs> he knows that you want to pray and you want to eat. So he's rushing me to finish in five minutes. Because if I delay your salah and your food, I, I am in a trouble. And I don't want to receive that treatment that the Prophet received sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in At-Taif. Where is Daniel? He told us that story, so I hope you guys don't have eggs in your, in your pockets tonight. <laughs> my brothers and my sisters, I, um, 
if I know, if I make no sense tonight, um, forgive me, I have been uh, on a travel, I'm just arrived from a five hours flight from the West Coast, and it's good to be with you, to celebrate the greatest of all humans. I don't know if I said this a few weeks ago when I said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, without any doubt, is, is, the best of all men, the best of all humans. He's the best father one could ever dream of having. He's the best son any parent could dream of having. He's the best worshiper anyone could love to imitate. He's the best statesman, the best spokesperson of a community. He's the best lawmaker anyone could ever think about having. He is the best environmentalist, the best voice for those who have no voice. And therefore, as I said a few weeks ago, and I repeat it again, because this is really what it is about. How can we not fall in love and actually love and be in love of him, as he said, more than we love ourselves. So that is, is the challenge I want to ask yourselves. Do you truly, really love him more than you love your positions, your money, your wealth, your children, your family, your own desires? And I say this because this is not a slogan. This is an act and requires an act. But if we love him more than we love ourselves, we, meaning we have to follow him more than we follow ourselves. And if we love him more than we love our nationalities and our cultures and our practices and our children, it is him who determines what is right, what is wrong, not our children, not our wives, not our husbands, not our culture, not our government. It is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who determines who we are and what we do. This is the challenge of this statement. My brothers and my sisters, we are not talking about an ordinary person, someone defined by Allah as the khatam, as the seal, meaning the one who brought in into his teachings, the teachings of all the prophets, all the messengers, after whom there is no one, there is no one. Enough that he said that if Isa were to come back, if Musa were to come back, if any prophet were to come back, they would have the honor and they would have no other choice but to surrender to his teachings. It is rather important that in the story of the Nuzul of Isa at the end of time, Isa will come down in Damascus at the time of Salat al-Fajr. Yes, that could be a lecture by itself. And at that time, Imam al-Mahdi would be sitting, waiting for the iqama to be made, to do Salat al-Fajr. This is Sahih Bukhari al-Muslim, I'm not making it up. As the iqama is being made, Isa comes down, and people will see him, and they will be so delightful that Isa is there. So what will Imam al-Mahdi do, you think? Imam al-Mahdi will do this, meaning he will ask Imam, he will ask Isa to do what? To leave Salat al-Fajr. What would Isa do? Alayhi salam. He will say, فَإِنَّهَا لَكَ أُقِيمَتْ It was, the iqama was made for you to leave, not for me. This is rather a tactical move from Isa alayhi salam. He's telling the world that, by the way, according to the hadith, the entire world will be watching live the return of Isa. When I did this research 30 years ago, I thought it's a miracle that will happen. But now it's not a miracle. 
people will be on their phones watching live the coming of Isa so Isa is telling the entire world starting with the Christians that I am not here to establish a new religion but rather to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and therefore he stands in the salah in the line to pray behind al-Mahdi to say I am here to follow Muhammad not to make a new religion sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so how can we be not in love of such a prophet who is beauty, whose honor, whose status will be pronounced live. Every human being, every animal, every creature will witness that moment. And the Christianity will have no choice then but to say either this or that. That's it. Isa himself says, I listen to Muhammad. How can we be not in love? He is the Khatam al Anbiya wal Mursaleen. He's a man who is purified by and judged by Allah to be the best of all people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified his tongue. Indeed, when he speaks, he speaks of no desire. Of no desire. Allah did not judge any human being, not even a prophets, with such a thing. So his tongue is what? Is it beautiful? Is it pure? Purified by whom? Allah. By Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautified and purified his chest. Alam mashrah, like a sadrak, have went we opened and cherished your chest for you. Allah did not describe any chest of any human being like he did of the chest of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Allah elevated his status and beautified his status when he said, Alam narfa' laka dhikra. Haven't we raised your status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make salam. Make salam. Make salam. Allah purified his ability to see. Mazag al basaru wa matara. Allah said, even his ability to see never went astray. Subhanallah. The Prophet was in his childhood before he became a prophet. He was on his way to play with kids, natural thing. But for the possibility that these kids will do something that may lead to wrong, Allah put him to sleep. He fell asleep somewhere before he gets to the party. He never witnessed sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam or participated in a story in a haram like this. How can we be not in love with such a man, my brothers and my sisters? Again, you wanted 20 minutes. I'll give you 20 minutes. But I mean, you need to cry for only having 20 minutes. Because if it was a movie, we will take three hours watching a movie and we even go delay our salah. It's natural thing. We delay everything for a movie. And that's it's wrong sometimes. It's okay to have fun. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I really want to tell you that we are missing a lot as men, as women, as children, as a human beings, as Muslims, for not indulging ourselves with the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and my sisters, I want to ask you a question before I move forward with my presentation. This is what I want you to do as you listen to me. Listen to what I'm gonna ask you to do. Every time you do something or you say something, say this to yourself. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam was here, would I do this? Or would I say this? 
لو كان موجودا افعلت meaning if you are about to scream at your father or your mother tell yourself if the rasulullah was here would i do it in front of him Hmm. If you're a businessman and, and, and you sell, let's say, pizza. If Rasulullah was there, would you add that kind of cheese in the pizza? If Rasulullah was here, would I do this to my son or to my daughter? Would I dress this way if he was here? How often do people try to look good in front of you? But what about in the front of Rasulullah? And in the front of what? Allah. Ask yourself, <coughs> as we celebrate the birth of the Prophet, it is not only the singing of his praise, however beautiful that is, but rather to ask yourself, if he was here with me, would I do this? If you are sitting with me in the room, would I backbite? Would I lie? If he was, if he, if I, if I was, if I was sharing with him a bed in a hotel, and the adhan is made, would I continue to sleep when, no, when I know that Muhammad just left the bedroom to go to the masjid for a prayer? If you really, if you really, really, really know that Muhammad could be in the masjid, would we ever refrain from going to the masjid? This is really what it ends up with. It's not, I love you. It's not a slogan, my brothers and my sisters. This is what the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alaihi Wasallam, Kullu Ummati Yadkhulu Jannata Illa Man Aba. Every human being in my Ummah will, I'm sorry, Kullu Naam. Everyone of my ummah will enter into Jannah except those who have decided not to. Really? So Sahaba asked me, how can anyone decide not to go to Jannah? Man ya'ba ya Rasulullah? Qala man ata'ani dakhal al-Jannah wa man asani faqad aba. Whoever obeys me have decided to go into Jannah. And whoever disobeyed me has refused to go to Jannah. It's a very simple formula. It's a very simple mathematically formula. You decide to go to Jannah or not according to this hadith with the Rahmah of Allah. But it is up to what? To your obedience or disobedience of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam. And brothers and sisters, when you do love him, when you follow him, you are granted so much stuff. You're inclined, granted his shafa'ah. When in that day, every one of us is looking for one witness to bring him into Jannah. And when your father gives up on you, when your mother gives up on you, when your child gives up on you, when, when, the, when, when millions of people give up on you, you would need someone to stand up with you. And no one would love you enough and care about you enough to want you to go to Jannah like Muhammad. Surah Al-Duha When Allah repeats in the Surah وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى O Muhammad, your Lord shall give you and you shall be pleased. Allah promised him. But the Prophet said, Wallahi la arda, I will never be pleased, I will never be pleased. Allah says, till what? He said, till all of my ummah goes to Jannah. He's not selfish. He's not going to be in Jannah. Well, he does not want to be in Jannah. Well. He wants to be in Jannah with you, you, yes, you, each and every one of you. He wants, yeah, yes, 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 you, yes, you, yeah, yeah, look me, yeah. He wants you, Allah, he wants you. 
والله he wants you والله you know he wants you in the back والله he wants you and you know why he wants you because of that green hijab on you and he will look at you and he will smile because of that green hijab and that beige hijab he would want you with your name he would want you yes you yeah, yeah. imagine he would not want to be in Jannah without you give me a human being who is that self, uh, selfless one man my brothers and my sisters you work on yourself do you want to be in Jannah or not if you do do not disobey him if you do listen to him surrender surrender because you do need him inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala Allah and, and his angels offer blessings on the Prophet If Allah, if Allah, the Creator, the Creator is offering blessings on him, who am I and you and us not to do that? But also, isn't it an honor to do what Allah is doing? So make salah. Make salah. Make salah. Make salah. But you know what also the hadith says? Every time we make salah on him, the hadith says that there are malaika who will take your salah up to him. So the brother say, Oh Allah, he made salah on me to bless him. How can we not want that honor? The Prophet himself is mentioning you, by the way the hadith says, in name, in name. In Jannah, with the Malaika. My brothers and my sisters, the way to love him, I'm going to just mention them for the sake of time, so you're going to stone me. Write them down, think about them, do whatever you want. Number one, get to know his seerah. Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad says, we used to teach our kids seerah like we used to teach them what? Quran. We used to teach them Sirah like we taught them Quran. Number two, listen to him. Number three, follow him. Why? Because Allah tells us that in him there is Uswa Hasana. There's an example that we need to follow. But also the, the, the ayah. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Powerful. There is no believing man or woman who would debate a decision made by Allah and what? And his messenger. I know that some people think that why is Brother here asking for sisters to come to this room? I say, I follow Muhammad. I don't follow culture. I don't follow what people are used to. I follow what the Prophet said. And I don't rationalize it. I don't like to think about it. It's very simple. In the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, women prayed in the back and women in the front. 
women sat down learning from the prophet and other than the prophet. End of the story. No argument about it. There's no rationality about it. There's no interpretation. There's obvious sirah and sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala wasallam. Some people say, no, but these were sahaba. We're not as good as sahaba. Really? So among the sahaba, we did not have people who needed to grow up? Of course. <laughs> but in the masjid, there were Jews and the Christians also coming all the time. And there were hypocrites coming all the time. According to the language of the Quran. But women were there all the time, in the back and the men in the front. Anything else that was given into culture and to what my tribe is teaching me. And the ayah said, Ma kana lahum. Mafi, there's no choice to make. How do you improve that? How does what, what, what are the signs that you love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam? What are the signs that you love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi There are signs according to the ulama. Again, I mentioned them only mentioned without much talking. Number one, madharuk, your look. Your clothes, your beard, if you are a man, your hijab, if you are a woman, your smell, or is a sign of love or lack of love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. There's so many hadiths about this that I don't have the time to get into. Like the Prophet said, Man kana lahu sha'arun fal yukrim. If you have hair, honor it. So when you have people, for example, who have hair, but let it go and it grow in all kinds of directions, and they do that in the name of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi. It's not, that has nothing to do with sunnah. Because you want to grow your hair, grow your hair, but have it look what? Representable. That's the hadith. And what the hadith says. When you dress in a specific way, it must not be a sign of arrogance. You're close. So your madhar, your look, is a sign of lack or love of Muhammad. Number two, kalamuka should be like his kalam. What you say should be like what he used to say. And like it. The Prophet says, none of you truly believes till he have good morals. And you will never have good morals till what you say is good too. So you could say you are a believer for as long as you want, but if you curse, oh no, 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 wait. If you curse, so no, I'm not gonna say the words. Cursing is not in the language of a Muslim. Yes, do, do you hear me? And don't tell me that's what the coach does in the school. Don't tell me that. I don't care. I don't learn my religion from the coach. Don't tell me outside they use the F word all the time. Muhammad did not, I don't. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I don't, I don't. Don't tell me well, I'm, I'm, I'm used to that in my culture. But where is Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa A Muslim would not curse. A mu'min would not curse. Your tongue should be clean. And I have to train myself on those things. So when you talk to your kids, parents, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. We are going to imitate you too. When you're angry with your wife and you break off and you start getting loose and they're going to learn it from you. Mothers, do you hear me? Sisters, if you get angry with your daughter or your son and you start cursing, your kids are going to take that from you. So a sign of the love of the prophet is the perfection of what comes out of my tongue. Number three, my morals, my ethics. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Mu'mina la yudriku bihisni al-khul, bihusni al-khulubi, darajat as-sa'ili wal-qa'im. SubhanAllah. That with the believer gets the reward of someone who fasted all the time and made qiyam all the time with what? With having good morals with having good morals. You get the same ajr when you have good morals. So it's not about making qiyam in the masjid, but my morals are exactly the opposite. 
it does not work like this. If we love the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to work on our akhlaq. And I end with two points. Number four, if I love the Prophet, I have to do bir of walidain. I have to be nice with my parents. The Prophet told one of the Sahaba, a young fellows, fellow, when the Prophet said, it came to know that by him wanted to do a specific act, his parents are sad. He said, go to your parents and make them laugh. Go to your parents and make them what? Laugh. What was your idea? Oh, he's not his thing out. Okay. You and his parents make him laugh. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna go into pick on him. Do you hear that? Go to your parents and make them what? Yeah. Never ever, my kid, my, my, my wonderful sisters, my young ones. Never ever. Never ever go to sleep knowing that your parents have gone to sleep unhappy. Wakada Rabuka Allah Tabuyu Wakada Rabuka Allah Tabuyu Allah Tabuyu Illa Aliya Wabili Wali Daini Sana Wabili Wali Daini Sana Imaya Bulu Ganna Inda Kalki Bara Aduhuma Aukilahuma Falata Kullahuma Ufin Walatana Aruhuma Wakullahuma Kaulan Kariman Walatana Aruhuma Wakullahuma Kaulan Kariman Brother, I'm taking you on the road with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Allah, I love you. The brother is reciting that beautiful ayah. I'm not going to recite it because that would take another half an hour. <laughs> but it's basically, Allah has decreed that you worship none but Allah and that you be respectful to your parents. Mm -hmm. This is not the game. I wish my father was around and my mother to kiss their feet every day, to serve them, to make them laugh. But unfortunately, I was in a good relationship with them. But I lost that chance of treating them good every day with what an honor. Now, our parents should not abuse that. Yes, your kids should honor you, but don't abuse them too because there is domestic child abuse and that should not be tolerated, that's wrong too. So if you love Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should honor your kids too and take care of them too and be merciful to them too and be compassionate to them too. I'm not overlooking that. Again, I know whether you love Muhammad or not, sallam, by how I see you, treating your parents. What signs, more signs of the love of the Prophet? Taking care of your neighbors, taking care of your family, being moderate, and being optimistic. Being optimistic. My brothers and my sisters, my brothers and my sisters, that's my presentation. It was not two hours. <laughs> was it 20 minutes either? To conclude, to conclude, it's not about the length of the lecture or how short it is. It is rather by whether I actually grasped the message and took it to heart. And this, the message that I started with, with which I want to end, 
my brothers and my sisters, old and young, always ask yourself if the prophet, peace be with him, was with me, would I still do this, say this, look like this, or talk like this? I swear that your entire life will change if you keep in mind that he might be present. Subhan Rabbi Kala Balajati Amma Yasifun Wassalamu Alaikum Wassalim Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Jazakum Allahu So you might see the second act after the dinner, after everybody has eaten, he will come back and do the Islamic trivia that all the young ones inshallah and everybody is allowed to participate inshallah. Is, he is asking are there prizes? <laughs> yeah, the Dr. Rihan is ready. Yeah. Dr. Rihan has a wealthy prize, but I guess he can go up and go there and go to the left door. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عم ما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى تسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله To do the sunnah at home, many people don't know this. He would, if it was like for fajr, he would do the sunnah at home and come out for far. And if it was for maghrib or other salawat, he would do the far the masjid and go home and do sunnah at home. You know, this is something many people do not know. For salat al isha, it is sunnah if you don't do it exactly on time, even for the far to delay it if you don't do it on time. These are good sunnah that we know and we need to know. What is the right to practice of the Prophet? Yeah. 
كريم يا الله يا بصير يا عليم يا الله يا بصير يا عليم يا الله يا ودود يا حكيم يا الله يا ودود يا حكيم يا الله يا عليم يا حليم يا عليم يا حليم يا عليم يا حكيم يا عليم يا حكيم يا ودود يا عظيم يا ودود يا عظيم يا ودود يا عظيم يا الله يا واحد يا أحد يا فرد يا صمد يا الله you are the all hearing the all seeing the all knowing يا الله you are the all loving the all caring the all kind we ask you Allah right this night to bless each and every one of us to bless each and every one of us to bless for us our spouses and our children and our sons and our daughters to bless for us our parents in this life and in the life to come we ask you Allah to bless Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and to bless his ummah and to bless the world with his blessings we ask you Allah that you may forgive us our sins we ask you Allah that you may wipe out for us all of our shortcomings and mistakes we ask you Allah that you may cleanse for us our hearts we ask you Allah that you, may, you, that you may protect all the Muslims of the world. Amen. Protect the Muslims of this country Amen. and all over the world. Amen. We ask you Allah that you may enter us into Jannah Amen. and elevate our status to Al Firdaus Al A'la. We ask you Allah that you may enable the Prophet, peace be with him, to be our Shafi'a and our mediator in Jannah. Amen. We ask you Allah to enable him to be our Shafi'a and our mediator in Jannah. Amen. And with him grant us the ability to drink from the water of Kawthar Amen. and the water of Salsabil Amen. and of Tasneem in al firdaus al-A'la. Ya Allah, fill our hearts with your nur. Fill our minds with your Quran. Shape our thinking and minds with your nur. Protect all of our bodies with your nur. Ya Allah, fill our chests with your nur. Fill our homes with your nur. Fill our businesses with your door and guide us on our way back home with your door. Ya Allah, we appeal to you knowing that our kids do not have it easy. That they are being distracted by all forms of distractions. Ya Allah, there is no one to seek refuge in but you. We ask you right this minute we beg you that you may protect our daughters and our sons. Protect them from the temptations of shaitan. Protect them from being overpowered by their desires and materialism. Ya Allah, bring them faster and more powerfully into Islam. Ya Allah, we know that we do love them and we know that you know that we love them. Protect them and make them the coolness of our eyes. Make them the coolness of our eyes. Make them the coolness of our eyes in this life and in the life to come. 
You want to protect them as they go into homes, as they come out of their homes, as they go into their schools, as they come out of their schools. Protect them, Ya Allah, from the temptations of internet and iPhones and social media. Protect for them their minds, their hearts, their souls, and help them to be the beautiful they are. The great, beautiful men and women they are. We know they are beautiful. Keep that beauty protected. Ya Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rizzati amma ya sufun. Wa salamu ala wa salim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma ameen. Bizaakumullahu khair. Allah <laughs>